Hello there, dearie. Come in, come in. Oh, hello there, Granny. How are you today? I'm doing what... <laughs> Oh, I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing wonderful. Oh, why, Granny? What a deep voice you have, dear. Ah, oh, it's just the the, the strep throat. Ah, oh. <laughs> I've got very bad strep throat at the moment. It's causing my teeth to elongate. Ah, oh, that was my <laughs> second observation. Was yes. my what big teeth you have. <laughs> All the better to have strep throat with my oh. dear. Uh, I was I was just going to tell you a story. Would you like to listen? All right, I'll sit down here by the fire. How old are you again? I don't know. The movie didn't say. <laughs> yeah, but you're like twelve, right? That's old enough for a good story about banging sure. <laughs> and murder. But first, before we do that, welcome to Oldie But A Goodie, the show where werewolves eat your granddaughters. Um, this week, we'll be talking about a, a movie that existed, that I witnessed, that I, I saw it, I think. <laughs> I may have had a fever dream. I'm not sure. Sandro, <laughs> my co-host, who yes. is named Sandro, how are you doing? Uh, in, I am in a state of disbelief as to what this was. I think I know what they were doing, but then I'm also like, what were they doing? (laughs) So, uh, this movie is a wild movie. Yeah. Um, very trippy, very, uh, um, uh, impressive effects, I would say, for the time. Yes. But also... A little incoherent throughout. <laughs> so, okay, first impressions. I enjoyed it. Oh yeah, and I and I think I know what was going on. I think I've managed to decode <laughs> yeah. what the allegory was. But then I'm also just like, why? <laughs> the thing is, you do have to though. Oh yeah. Like, there's no question that it's 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 a bit complicated to get your head around because what's happening is there's like a dream sequence into story sequences inside the dream sequence. Mm. And there's multiple layers of that, and but also the story sequences are also real and have happened in this dream sequence? Yes. Question mark? Yes. And it's all an allegory for good versus evil. Kind of. Yep. We'll and get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Primal it. instincts and yes. being big meanies and not. And how women can be evil werewolves too. Yep. And and pastors can bang. Yeah, the pastor stuff was weird. <laughs> Don't know why they needed to include that. <laughs> the grandma hated the church. It's <laughs> like, hey, this pastor's a piece of shit. The grandma's great though. Oh my god, the grandma was actually insane that's that's the sort of grandma that the parents put in a nursing home as soon as they can yeah and like never talk to her it's me your grandma if if you see someone who's got big eyebrows (laughs) run for the hills they're the devil (laughs) that's funny because it's almost verbatim the quote yeah from the movie that's what Which she says. Is amazing. All right, uh, a couple mm. things up top. First of all, that I got to get out of the way. Number one, the show. The show is now on Amazon. Big surprise! Amazon launched a podcast platform. They asked us to join it. We were like, "Okay, Amazon." So now we're on Amazon. So if you've got Amazon nice. Prime Music, check us out there. Hell yeah, my dude. So that's pretty fun. Also, we've got a bunch of new listeners from England. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, English listeners. They're going to love our English accents. <laughs> what was that? That was not English. <laughs> that, that ended on Australian. But anyway, uh, this show, we talk about movies from 1984 during the week they came out in. And your other options for this week, the other films that came out this week in 1984 that weren't Company of Wolves were these other options that you could have picked. There was All of Me, a rich woman dies and her spirit inhabits a lawyer's body. That also sounds like it could have been weird and silly, but with less going yep. on. That, that does sound interesting, although this one was definitely the pick. I think. Oh, definitely. Uh, there was Places in the Heart, 
a uh, young woman has to take care of her farm after her husband dies. Sounds like it could be good, but also depressing. Um, yeah, this one had a range of emotions. Yes, people. yes. It wasn't just sadness all the time. It was... Not exactly about a sadness and overcoming great hardships. No, no. Um, it's It's wild, confusing, conflicting emotions throughout... 90% of this film. It's multiple, it's the the whole point of the film is, hey, you can feel multiple emotions at the same time, and boy, did you watching this movie. They really <laughs> yeah. succeeded in that. <laughs> I feel like at every stage, maybe not the intro, Yeah, it's like the intro is the only place where you don't feel two conflicting <laughs> emotions yeah. throughout this entire film. Oh. <laughs> uh, and My then the God. other two options for this week really? were Windy City, a writer, thinks back on his life and is like, oh my god, how did I end up here? I hate my life. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> and then there was Threads, another British movie, but also an Australian movie in collaboration oh. between the BBC and Channel 9 about two families who try to survive a nuclear war. So, Which actually sounded interesting. I, I, I did think about checking that one out. Ah, uh, but let's bloody get into the company of wolves then, eh? Oh, yeah. There's not too much info on this movie, uh, so I'll quickly go through it, but it won't take too long. It was released September 21st. It's co-written by Angela Carter, who is uh, an author of many different styles of novels and and short stories, but uh, has a consistent theme of, like, magical realism, which I think... Mm. This film isn't necessarily magical realism, but it's definitely magical. Well, it, it tries to be realistic. I feel like they took a, a real approach, although it is a fantasy film. So, like, yeah. like, it's set in real life, but with lots of fantasy elements thrown in, which obviously fantasy... Not exactly realistic at times, no. but it's it's pretty solid. Yeah, it tried it tried to be more real than you would think. The short story, if you're interested, is in a collection called The Bloody Chamber. Uh, the the short story, The Company of Wolves, which is based off this. Apparently, it's more obvious. The allegories are more obvious in the short story than they are in the movie. I so. yeah, I I, <laughs> I would definitely believe that, mostly because this film was. Very confusing a lot of the time. Yeah, um, um, I kind of, I kind of want to read that original story. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good story. Yeah, like because there's obviously things you can't fit into a film, mm. which would make it less clear. That's that's always the price of movies is that you can have things that are in there because they're important to the story, but without the context of the story, don't make as much sense. No. Definitely not. Which can be a bit, a bit of, bit of a, a. You have to have to know what to cut out, and sometimes it can leave things a bit more confusing than the book itself, because the book has the luxury of being able to be very long. Yes. And have all the details. So, and yeah. and have a in a monologue and stuff like that as well to literally mm, explain yeah. how people are feeling. Which, if you don't have a good actor, that's not going to happen in your movie. Uh, not saying yeah, that the actors yeah. were bad in this, but. <laughs> Uh, no. Every time I think about this movie, I cannot stop thinking about, and I just have to get this out now, the long-ass tongues. Okay? Oh, every boy. <laughs> every time I think about the actors and everything, just everything in this movie only winds me back to that scene where there's this long tongues. <laughs> the body horror in this movie was pretty full on, but nothing scarred me more than the long tongues. <laughs> There's people yeah. ripping their faces off, but what the one thing that creeped me out was mm. those long tongues. Yeah, far out. Like, oh my god. Ugh. I, the effects were awesome in this film. They were for very a, solid. Like, for a, for a 1984. Alright, let's put 1984. This had better effects than a lot of movies I've seen today. Um. Nowadays. I don't know if I would... Yeah, to a point. Uh, to a point, like, for the effects that they were going for. Yeah. I yeah. mean, clearly the wolves were just dogs. <laughs> I mean, that was... <laughs> yeah. That was obvious. Yeah. <laughs> They're just dogs with red eyes. But, um... 
you know, some of the body horror stuff of the, the dogs, like, the practical effects were very impressive. Yeah, there's one transformation that was phenomenal. I thought both of the transformations were really cool. But they were they were interesting because they were both different. Yes. Which I thought was very cool. I liked, I liked that a lot. I liked how... Hmm. Actually, there's, like, three transformations, and they're all very different. Yeah, 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 which is cool. So the movie is directed by Neil Jordan, his second ever film. He did a movie in 1994 called Interview with the Vampire. Empire, which we didn't do an episode on, but I watched it anyway mm. last year, and it was fine. Okay. Uh, it makes sense that he would direct both of these, because they are very similar. They're very similar mm. in tone. Uh, for the cast, Sarah Patterson plays Rosaline slash Red Riding Hood? I don't know. Yes. Absolutely Red Riding Hood. No, 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 no. Non-copyright Red Riding Hood. Non-copyright Red Riding Hood. <laughs> Because exactly. Red Riding Hood's not in the public domain. Like when, because it takes a while for them to actually say what her name is. When I heard that it was mm. Rosaline, I went, wait, like Rose Red? As in yeah. Snow White and Rose Red? Is that what they're doing? They didn't. But I was like, is that what, what? they're doing? Because then there's also the whole she's asleep thing. And I was like, are they tying in lots and lots of different what? fairy tales here? Is she Sleeping Beauty as well? You know, what's going on? What? You, you know Rose Red. What, what rose yeah like the color red no rose red is a character she's snow white's sister no i don't know that off the top of my head well and i don't i sorry i i should have studied for this test sir i'm so sorry i didn't study all of the fairy tale how dare you come into an episode I'm, like I'm, this i'm so, so sorry i'm clearly unprepared for this episode i didn't realize we'd be going into other <laughs> fictional fairy tale i mean lore. it's it's the general requirement requirement of this podcast to know yeah, the brothers oh, so grim sorry, to know the fairy tales and quite frankly mm. you're fired now need you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh well so, let, let me at least finish this episode first yeah yeah so, right, all right um yes yeah, yeah, so there is a fairy tale <laughs> called snow white and rose red and i thought that because her name was rosaline that they were trying to combine mm. them also because real world rosaline is sleeping i was like it's a sleeping beauty cuz she's sleeping yeah, a lot okay, so i was kind of like and, and they don't but that was where my head was at for a lot of I the just, movie i just thought you know rose red red like red riding hood look you that's don't? that's almost definitely what the riders were like they were like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's red riding hood <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but, but I was like, "There's more layers." <laughs> yeah, Sajo's got his mi- microscope out, like examining the the the, the <laughs> plot written out onto his script. He's got the script under the mic. Yeah, my God, it's so detailed. This thing goes deeper. Yeah, I'm sitting there and I'm like, I've, I've got to go deeper, deeper into this screenplay. Because there's a lot of layers. There's a lot of layers in this movie. It's all an allegory for good and evil. It's all an allegory for growing up or something. I don't know what that ending was. We'll get to it. It was Inception the entire time. The actress, Sarah Patterson, hasn't really done much else. She did this and then she played Snow White in a TV movie and that's about it. Oh my God. I'm just saying, if she played Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, Rosaline, this, well, this movie, just saying, it's all connected. It's not. Spoiler warning! Uh, Angela Lansbury plays Granny. She's best known for the main character in uh, Murder, She Wrote, but she's also mm. the voice of Miss Potts in Beauty and the Beast. It's all connected. Damn. Boom. It's all connected. But yeah. Wait, she played the, the, the teapot? Yeah, she's Miss Potts. Hell yeah. I love yeah, that yeah, yeah. teapot. Sass, sassy old lady teapot. Good on her. She was, she was the best character in this movie by far. I mean... She was <laughs> absolutely bat, uh, poo-poo. Insane. The, I love, I love old grannies in these sort of stories because they're so superstitious and just... Oh, absolutely. And the, 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 they hate everyone and I love it. Mm. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, the, the character is so unlikable, but you love how much you unlike her. You know what I mean? I didn't unlike her. <laughs> I didn't unlike her. What do you mean? Why did you hate the granny? She's just trying to pass on her wisdom. What's wrong with that, Sandro? Well, isn't... Well, that's kind of the message of the movie, though, is, like, people who think like that are the real villains, not the werewolves. The werewolf killed her. <laughs> yeah, there's that as well. <laughs> The werewolf literally was trying to murder people. 
So was the other one. That's the thing about the movie that I don't get, right? Is, yeah. like, the ending is like, oh, werewolves are people too. But then it's like, the werewolves killed your sister at the start of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's that's a question I had as well at the end there, where they're like, wolves are cool. But I wrote down, but yeah, like, he just murdered the <laughs> granny. <laughs> These wolves but, are like but, beheading people left, right, and center, and you're like, they're cool. If Granny is the villain, then was that a good kill? But also, she wasn't the villain because Red Riding Hood loves her Granny. Red Riding like, Hood what? does like her Granny a lot. Yeah, mm. I don't know. I think I think what the message of this movie is: there is no good and evil, and everyone in this movie sucks. <laughs> That's probably the message. Yeah, maybe maybe the. Um... Maybe the thing is just like, you know, not, well, not all people are good. A lot of yeah. people, there's a lot of grey in the world. I feel like we should have done a spoiler warning earlier because people might... Anyway, who cares? The other mm. notable just, cast... Just insert a spoiler warning. Be like, <gasps> spoiler warning! All right, I'm going to copy and paste that earlier and it's going to make <laughs> yeah. no sense when it happens, but then they're going to hear this and they're going to be like, ah. Just just copy, paste it, but keep that bit in here as well. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, so that's what I'm going to do. Hell yeah. All right, the only other notable cast member is David Warner, who plays the father. He's in everything, but we recently saw him in Star Trek Five and Six for the mm. our episode of No Doubt Consumed. He was in both of those. For the reception, 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, audience score of 73%. From what I could tell, people like the stylized nature. People like the set. People like that it's got something to say about feminism and duality and stuff people are like what the fuck is this just, this is wild <laughs> it won some baftas for best costume best makeup that sort of stuff absolutely as it should very positive reception and i was honestly surprised yeah no i had no expectations coming into this so coming out of it i was like Damn, that was wild. What are the reviews going to be like? And it's mostly positive. Yeah. And I'm glad people were like, literally people were like, this is this is a wild ride. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird because I feel like, I feel like if I were to rate it out of a hundred, I might give it like 60 or something just because I don't think it entirely adds mm. up. But like that really, and that why, and I'm like, I'm genuinely surprised that it's got these very positive reviews. I don't know. Like, what would you give it out of 100? I'd, I'd probably give it an 80. I okay. think I, I, I quite like this film, and I think um, I think people coming into this knew what they were coming into this. Mm. Or it's people who've seen it before coming into this being like, I remember this film being yeah. pretty awesome as a child. And then they watch it, and they're like, wow, this is wild. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like on the rewatch, this one would make more sense, and two, you catch, you can just catch more of the the wild. Yeah, exactly. This cost two point three million dollars, which is pretty cheap. How how much was it? Two point three million. Two point three. Oh, All of the okay. actors were. At, I mean, Angela wow. Lansbury. This was before Murder She Wrote, so she was just. Mm kind of like a TV actress who had done some British cinema at this point. So, you know. I mean, obviously there's a bit of inflation there, but that's very impressive. For yeah. This film. Uh, what do you think it made worldwide? What do you think it made worldwide? 10 mil? Uh, a little less. 8.5? A little less. 7.5? 7.2. 5? 7 7.2. Okay. That's good. I'm glad it made its money back. Yeah. The practical effects were amazing for like mm. 2. 2.8. Let's jump into the movie. Um, the font I thought was excellent. Mm, you've got a nice, elegant font. You say this this elegant font was you were a fan of it. It was very good. It was like you're watching the company of wolves. You know, like that's the mm. voice. If the font had a voice, yes, it yes. would be like hello, hello, everyone. It is time for a company of wolves. Yes. Today we will be reading and showing you a company of wolves. It's going to be batshit crazy, but, you know, it's got an elegant font. The following movie is rated M. It contains evil grandmas and lots and lots of blood from the wolf transformations. How is she evil, though, Sandra? She's not evil. She's just crazy. The point of the movie is that no one's evil. That's right. The point of the movie is no yeah. one's evil. Aside from Grant, no, wait, wrong message. I keep getting the wrong no, message no. in the movie. It's not. It's not that no one's evil. It's just there's a lot of grey areas. Yeah, 
Um, also, the wolves deal with Satan, and that is a thing that's canon in this movie. That is. <laughs> so, are wolves bad? <laughs> probably. Werewolves probably bad. We're skipping ahead a bit. Well, yeah, we should go from the start. So it opens in the modern day. Uh, well, modern-ish. Well, the 80s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Modern yeah. for then. 30, yeah, 30 something years ago. I think it was still, like, maybe 10 years before, like, the 70s. Oh, I guess, um, yeah, because uh, the main character's sister comes out of the house and she's wearing quite an old-fashioned dress. So I think yeah, you're right. Yeah. I think it might be the 70s. Yeah, because it's, cause it's got, like, dinner parties and other things. Although that's, like, a story in this dream set. I don't. Yeah. I didn't even realise that. The story that she tells is set in the future from when she's living. What do you mean? It's very much the Victorian era that all of the Red Riding Hood takes place in. Oh, yeah, and, wait. And then the story that she tells is like... I didn't think of that at all as well. To th- I literally <laughs> just said it, didn't think about it. And you telling me now, I've realised what I just said. Because... Red Riding Hood lives in the Middle Ages. Yeah, it's and like... so then there's the, but then she talks about the Victorian. <laughs> unless unless it's like the same period. I don't think it is because the clothing is completely different. Also, it's all a dream, so it doesn't really. It's all a dream, know. so it could be complete <laughs> bonk. So uh, we are this confusing. Is, this is the movie. We are confusing the hell out of everyone listening. If you're confused right now, that's because this is this movie. The listeners have no idea what's going on, and we should just yeah, talk about the movie. We watched the movie, and we don't know what's going on, Sandro. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Anyway, so it opens with these parents coming home to find. Their two daughters are are in the house. One of the daughters yep. is like, "Hello, mummy. Hello, daddy. It's time for a dinner party." And then the parents are like, "Go and get your sister." So the sister goes up to see her sister, but the sister's sleeping. They had like ten minutes of dialogue about how this one sister's all trouble. Yeah, she's all naughty. Yeah, and well, like the dad's like, "I don't understand, young woman," <laughs> and. Uh, she she tells me I don't understand, and she's right. I don't I don't understand. Now what's going on? It's the eighties. Yeah. All I do is I go to work and then I come home and I have a beer. <laughs> yep. Um. Uh. So the sister goes up to check on who we know is Rosaline, the main character, yep. who is sleeping, uh, having a nightmare, uh, in a room mm. surrounded with creepy dolls. Yes. But there are so many questions here, because this isn't the dream sequence yet. This no. is real life, right? Yes, yes. So she's just sleeping in this... This room is... This is her room. Yes. No wonder she, one, has problems. Two, her sister is a complete asshole. Pest, 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 pest. Pe- that's direct quote. We hear her going, pest, 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 pest. Yes, that's what she calls her sister. She's, she's like, awful. She, like, craps on her sister in this scene, where she's like, you're a lazy bastard, sleeping in all day, I bet you've been into my makeup too, I bet you know, all these things. Like, her sister's awful. Mm. I was like, whoa! It really is, it really is. Because it's very left field. So we see the Rosaline is sleeping, and very mm. slowly we pan to the window and Twilight mm. Zone music begins to play doo, 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 as we travel into her dream and we see her sister, the sister who calls her a pest, running through a forest. And in the forest there are the the, the toys that we saw in Rosaline's room, except mm. now they're giant. They're big old toys yep. and they're trying to attack the sister, but the sister's like, bloody get off me! And she runs away. Mm. And then there's wolves. Yep, there's wolves slash dogs with red eyes. (laughs) Yeah, they're they're just dogs. The wolves in this movie (laughs) are just dogs. I mean, they use, like, this one main dog that they have that is, like, very wolf-like. It's like a husky sort of wolf-looking dog that they have, which looks like a wolf. It's very wolf-like. They use it several times, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, Which is good. Uh, cause it looks wolf-like, and then we have, it's a weird dream, cause there's like, m- giant mushrooms 
You also mm. see which is at uh, uh, owls. Oh, and she keeps running into rats and not screaming when she runs into Mm. the rats like most movies would do. No, instead she goes, and then runs away. Which, honestly, I was relieved with. I was fully expecting her to scream and me to go, Mm. but no, she was like, and then she tried to hit the rat. Yeah, she hit the rat. And then the wolves were like, stop hitting our rats. The rats are our friends. And then she's like, ah, wolves. And it's like, man, that's racist. You can't say that. And then she runs. And so the wolves are like, come back here. And then they eat her. Yep. And we cut to Rosaline sleeping, except now she's smiling because she just dreamed about killing her sister. (laughs) Yeah. Which already I'm super confused because I was like, wait, she sees a girl die. But is it her sister? I don't understand. Is her sister dead now? But it wasn't, because it was a dream. Well, is it? I eventually got the fact that it's a dream. I thought this was like, they went into the forest and this was a different character. Okay. Like, just a different person. And that they would die. And that she wasn't dreaming. She was just seeing into the future and or past Mm. over there. But... No, this is a dream. It is a dream. Uh, So the daytime comes, there's a funeral. The funeral's a mess, to be honest. Funeral? There's a frog on the coffin. (laughs) Well, that's that's the least of the worries. These two two youngins are causing a ruckus. The pastor's sermon is, like, subpar at best. No one's crying. No one's upset nah, <laughs> that the, this kill's dead. Granny's clapping. The parents are like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone's just like, well, that's another... It's one less mouth to feed. <laughs> Good on you, wolves. Yeah, to be, to, to be fair, yeah, that, that would have been like a positive back then. It's yeah. like, well, at least we don't have to feed this child anymore. Uh, I've got my first granny quote right here. Mmm... I do as well. Yeah, where <laughs> I think it might be the same one. Where Rosaline mm. and Granny are in a cart coming back from the funeral, and Rosaline's really upset. She's like, My sister went out in the wolves, went out in the forest by herself, died from wolves. It doesn't make sense, Granny. Why couldn't she save herself? Well, uh, you don't know anything. You're a child. What the hell, Granny? <laughs> Granny. Uh, just, so they're going along and he's like, why couldn't she say that? You don't know anything. You're a child. <laughs> Shut up. It's like... You stupid child. You don't know anything. It's it's perfect. It's perfect granny energy. I was on board from yeah. the beginning. I was like, this granny just, just, just without context, being like, you're a kid. Shut up. Was just like, this yeah. is excellent. I love this. It was great. Um, she's, she's got more words of wisdom after that, though. I've written some of them down. Oh, yeah, because after this, after this, Rosaline goes to stay with her granny, because the parents are like, mm. oh, we're too sad, Rosaline, you can't stay with us tonight. Go stay with your granny. We're sad. We're sad. Yeah. So Rosaline goes to stay with her granny in her dangerous cabin out in the woods that you've got to take a particular path to go on. And along this journey, she relays wisdom. This is a this is a note I'll put. You know how I said they would immediately put her in a home, the first thing? Yep. Like nowadays? This is her home back then. <laughs> they just have this cabin in the middle of the woods where she's nowhere near anyone else. It's because that's a like old person home where they put her. <laughs> yeah. They really don't want to mess with her because she's just absolutely insane. So yeah. this is the point. Like, she doesn't live in the village with all the other people. No, she has this cabin in the woods for literally no reason other than she's just insane and no one wants to deal with her. It's also a very dangerous cabin to get to. because pr- like, Absolutely. It's like 70% of people die on the way to this place. <laughs> yeah, like 90% of the wisdom that they say is never stray off the path because people die. <laughs> yeah. And this is where they're sending this old lady constantly is going through this pathway where people actively die. Exactly. So, like, clearly this this lady's got the, the, the short end of the mm. stick. Although, I must say, it's a nice cabin in the middle of the woods. Oh, it's a lovely cabin. I would 100% live in that cabin. Another point Absolutely. as well is the granny 100% owns it. She's like, this is my cabin. Hell yeah. It's dangerous, but I love it. It's my home. You don't like it? Don't visit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Good on Granny for owning that dangerous cabin that her kids yeah. probably force her into. That's what I'm saying. Granny's the best person and she's full of good wisdom. Well, <laughs> never stray off the path. That is which good is wisdom. a great call. People yeah. die. 
Literally, her sister died because she went off the pub. Hmm. Never eat a windfall apple. Sure, okay, you know. some uh, Like, if they've fallen off the tree like that, they might be rotten. Mm. Have a worm in them, you know, that's bad. Yep. They might, uh, you know, might have contracted something. Yeah, it's okay. Like, maybe some of the apples might be okay, but don't risk it. Mm. You know, and then never trust a man that has eyebrows that meet. As soon as she said that, I went, oh, it's this sort of movie. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay, lady. Um, uh, clearly, uh, uh, uni brows uh, are the work of Satan. App- apparently so. In this universe, if you've got a uni brow, you're a werewolf and you work for Satan. <laughs> Well, to be fair, uh, that was a sign of uh, rich people. Rich people had unibrows. That was a thing back in the day. Indeed it was. So, and rich people are the work of the devil. So, you know, maybe the, she was onto something. Mm. But uh, she uh, she has more stories. So we get, we get to Granny's house. We see this epic flat, epic house montage. Uh, she has a um, a ferret on the door that screams at people, like screeches at yep. intruders and stuff. Yep. Don't question it. There's no context for that. Don't don't question it. Yeah, don't question anything. So yeah, they are in this cabin, and Granny's like, "Listen here, my my, my young mm-hmm. grandchild, I'm the Emperor Palpatine." <laughs> All <laughs> of a sudden, oh, <laughs> Grandma. What a- what a weird Palpatine voice you have. <laughs> All the better to bring order to the universe with. <laughs> My dear. My <laughs> dear. Um, Join so... me in the dark side. <laughs> Together we shall rule the galaxy. She would make a great Miss Palpatine. Yes, That's she would. Sure. So just in case you were wondering if this movie has anything to do with Red Riding Hood, uh, it totally does because because uh, Granny mm. is knitting Rosaline a red shawl for her to wear. Mm. That's important. Yes, which we'll come into later. Uh, she tells her about the, uh, the worst sort of wolves, which, by the way, Mm. The worst sort of wolves are hairy on the inside <laughs> and drag you to hell when they eat you. <laughs> yeah, so she's talking about how how Rosaline's sister is going to heaven because she was eaten by yep. wolves that are hairy on the outside. But yes. be warned, for if you are eaten by a wolf that is hairy on the inside... Then you shall go to hell. Yep, they drag you to hell with them, which is honestly a bit of a bummer. Don't die to a werewolf, guys. No, no, no. Even if you're a good, you just go to hell. Yeah. So good words of wisdom to this 12-year-old child. Is she 12? Because she also makes out with a very old man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. She's ambig- I think she's. I think she might be 18. Or si- I think I think she's like supposed to be like sixteen. Yeah, which does make it a bit weird. Oh yeah, because it's also meant to be a coming of age story as well. Anyway, are you okay? Because you're having a traumatic experience <laughs> about your sister dying. Let me tell you about werewolves and dragging to hell. That will calm you down. Let me tell you this terrifying tale. <laughs> this horrifying tale about a wife nearly getting murdered. <laughs> so. Granny, Granny tells Rosaline this story about about this this quaint village woman who married a traveller. Except the traveller's eyebrows, they met. Well, that's bad. On the night of their wedding, he suddenly gets an urge to run outside, and he never returns. And the woman is like, oh, he is gone. He is dead forever. Okay, I have questions already about this story. So clearly she's married this handsome traveller. Yes. And then the handsome traveller turns out to be a werewolf. Uh, Yes. Spoilers. Yes. He clearly knows he's a werewolf and he goes outside, but he just doesn't come back. No. Like, obviously they search for him. They can't find him because he's a wolf boy and they think he's dead. But then he just doesn't come back till way late. Like, what does he expect is going to happen leaving this lady for, like, years? I don't... I, I don't... Yeah. I don't know... I don't know if this happened or if this is just a story the granny told or like that's another thing. This may or may not have happened. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I don't know I don't know why he left for so long, because he left for years. 
Like, literal years. The other thing is, like, the werewolves literally destroy their human bodies when they transform. So maybe it just takes them forever to become a human again. Mm, that's true. That is maybe. true. I don't know. I thought it was just, like, magic, you know? I That's what I thought as well. I wasn't sure. It, mm. it doesn't... I don't know. We need explanations. But also, I'm glad we didn't get any, because this movie was, yeah. you know, a, a good length. Anyway, as you mentioned, yeah, he returns. He returns years later, but she's been married again. She's got some kids kids he just shows up and is like what you had kids without me how bloody dare you and so he does what any man would do and he rips off his skin uh so she like splashes him with hot water as he tries to like attack her and Mm. he yeah this is where the movie went from like a pg-13 yes to uh m yes real quick where he like rips off his skin and I I this is when I really started paying attention to the movie. <laughs> it's a it's a pretty full on transformation that mostly works. I think the skin tearing is pretty mm. good. However, when the skin is completely torn off a little weird and then the face mm. starts to contort into a wolf's head and oh, some of it yeah. looks good like the jaw coming out of his mouth was pretty excellent oh, that was awesome but then like the opening of the jaw was a bit weird because the teeth were obviously fake mm. i don't know but then mm. uh husband number two comes back home yeah he's got an axe and yeets yeets the the dude's head off he chops the head off and the head lands in a bucket goes down under the water as a as a wolf's head but when it comes up mm. it's a human head again yeah that's why i'm saying it probably doesn't take time for them to become human again that's true because he goes from like half wolf back to human instantly that is true that yeah. is true uh, and she's like, oh, he was a human after all. I'm very sad. And the husband's mm. like, I'm going to hit you. Yeah. And then the story's over. And Granny's like, that's why you never get married. Yeah. Not because of the werewolf thing. That's not important. Mm. No, 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 no. It's absolutely that. That's that's the wrong, that's the wrong part. But also, what the frick was that story, Grandma? <laughs> Are you trying to traumatize <laughs> this young lady? Whose sister just died? What are you doing, Granny? With that, that grandma. You you questioned whether or not she was old enough. She was not. <laughs> Wait a year or two. Give us some time to grieve. Exactly. But also very important for the, the viewer as well. Like, honestly, I'm glad that Granny told that story for us. For us, I'm like, mm. I'm glad that I know that story. I'm not like, Rosaline... She didn't need to hear it at that point, quite frankly. She was grieving. I feel sorry for her, but I'm glad that we know Mm. that exposition. Mm. But why? What was the point? I don't know. I guess the point is, don't get married. It's a great story. You know what? Men, men are beastie boys. Don't trust them. They're all werewolves in disguise. We are all werewolves. Some of them just, (laughs) some of them, some of them are just werewolves on the inside. Yeah. What? Okay. <laughs> mm, think about it, Sandro. That's deep. Uh, the werewolf was inside of us all along. Oh, oh no, of the unibrow. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's, <laughs> if you don't have a unibrow, uh, you're fine. This one time I was really worried that I was going to get... I was like 14 and, and mm-hmm. the hair in between my eyebrows started to grow a little bit faster and I was like, oh no, I'm going to get a unibrow. And I almost <laughs> shaved it. I'm glad I didn't because that, that razor was very large <laughs> and it would have made me look very weird. <laughs> my eyebrows meet in the, the middle. They have like a few hairs mm. that, that, that connect. So I almost, I have a very almost unibrow, there we go. but I don't. I just have rather fuzzy uh, eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I really felt this when she said, don't don't fucking trust anybody with a unibrow. Anyway, a Rosaline returns home and is like, Mum, what's up with Granny? And the mum's like, don't listen to Granny, she's nuts. <laughs> yeah, she's batshit insane, which is fair. Yeah. Um, But also, Granny's kind of cool, so I get you don't like Granny because you're a responsible adult, but yeah, yeah Granny's fine. Yeah, she's making, her a, she's making her a red shawl. Granny's cool. So this is the part of the story where Granny and Rosaline go to the church. Now, this church, it's interesting. There's spiders on the ceiling. They actively fall down occasionally um, because they go to the grave site of her sister to put flowers on there and uh, talk shit about the pastor. Um, Who's right next to him, by the way. Well, he's deaf. He can't Mm. hear anything. Except he's not at all. Granny's just a complete... (laughs) 
bastard to this to this just complete dick to this poor pastor who's just like yeah i'm pruning these trees don't mind me and the pastor's like i'm up here cutting this tree i'm just gonna i'm just gonna cut this one branch make it fall on your head granny what do you think about that yeah some spreading lies and you know what Good on him. Mm. I think that was a fair call. So Granny then launches into another story, which is all about how werewolves work for the devil in the woods. Mm. And we see the, the, this story of this young of this young boy who goes out into the woods and out of nowhere a car appears and in the car is a man who gives him a vial and he and he rubs the vial um, the 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 liquid that's inside the vial he rubs it on his chest and then hair starts to grow when he's like oh my god I'm a werewolf yeah can we talk about this scene where he's just in the middle of the wolves and the devil pops up in like a white car and is like hey here you go that's the devil juice right there yeah so hang on so there's ma- <laughs> there's many questions question number one granny is telling the story and knows what a car is mm. that's weird question number two rosaline's driving the car except she's got a blonde wig uh well is it rosaline i don't think it's rosaline it's I the just... same actress it's definitely the same actress so here's the thing i i don't think the granny specifically said a car but is telling her about the devil showed up in in uh, a chariot of man-made invention or whatever you know well yeah because because it's a story within a dream so i guess the dreamer imagined it being Mm. a car because that's what the dreamer but the granny story itself doesn't actually have a car in it exactly anyway this doesn't matter at all this dream doesn't matter (laughs) this dream never comes back i think it does actually because I think this werewolf, the young werewolf we see, mm. is the same werewolf that kills Granny, the the, the main werewolf. Uh, uh, but <laughs> but but also it doesn't matter no. because it doesn't really have anything other than some very cool visuals of a guy getting hair on his chest from from. Mm. The Satan juice. <laughs> that was cool. Wow. What well, a line what to take you... out of context. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this is this is a cool scene. The devil rocks good. up and he's like, here's some juice. Don't 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 use it all at once. Catch you later, friendo. And he drives off. The devil seems pretty cool. He he is a gentleman. Yeah. And we know this for a fact because they talk about it later on. They're like, hey, they mm. always say the devil's a gentleman. Alright, let's talk about who is, in my opinion, the worst character in, in, in the movie. There's this boy who likes Rosaline. God damn and it. And he's like and he's like, Rosaline, walk out to the woods with me. We'll go for a walk in the woods. Question number one about this kid. All of his dialogue is dubbed. Was it? Yeah, because like there were so many moments where he was acting alongside Rosaline, and it's obvious like like she was talking on set because her face was emoting. We cut to him, and it's like, "Hello, come out to the woods with me." Mm. It's like a very studio recording, and it just felt a mm. little weird for me. Uh, and the act okay. is also bad. Mm. Yes. And the character's also the worst. But I think he's meant to be endearing, but he is not at all. But he's, like, just a kid. I mean, he's very pushy, but yeah. Yeah, they go out for a walk in the woods, and he's like, Oh, give us a kiss, won't we? <laughs> no, 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 no. But you missed the most important bit, where what? everyone in the village is like, Hell yeah, <laughs> he's getting that poon tan. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that yeah. did happen. That's, that's my boy. <laughs> That did Getting... happen. <laughs> even the even the, her dad is like, oh man, you're going for a walk. You're banging him, aren't you? <laughs> so... She's like, I'm just going out on a walk with him, dad. Why are you, why are you so freaking uptight? And he's like, oh, I guess that's what they say. You, 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 you lose your daughter twice or something like that. I don't know what he says. <laughs> it was so stupid. <laughs> it is very dumb. Uh, but the rest of the entire village is like, yep, they're banging. Yeah, the entire village watches them walk and they're all like, oh yeah, good on you, laddie. Ugh. You go get her. So they're out walking and yeah, he's like, oh, give us a kiss, won't ya? And she's like, all right, but first you gotta chase me. And then he catches her once, and just gets, gets some snog. And then he's like, oh, that wasn't a good kiss. Let's do another one. And she's like, eh, no, thank you. Bye-bye. And then she runs off. Yep. And he's like, you can't stray from the path. This is the dangerous woods. What are you doing? What are you doing? 
good. This is the this is the no no. Everyone literally everyone says don't stray from the path. Okay, <laughs> Red Riding Hood. What are you doing? <laughs> literally <laughs> everyone, like Grandma, the one person you respect above all, is literally constantly telling you to not yes. get off the path. Exactly. And what do you do? First thing you go into the woods after after she goes. Like, and says, yeah, I'm going to go on the, into the woods. Literally, the last thing they say to her is, don't stray off the path. Mm. That's what grandma says as they go into the woods. And what's the, like, the first thing she does <laughs> is go off the goddamn <laughs> path. Like, the you're path. asking for it. She should have died. I'm mm. just saying. So she climbs a tree, right? And this is where we get the, mm. the doll eggs that hatch. Yeah, what happened? Any, I don't even know. She finds a mirror in this nest with a bird in it. All the eggs hatch simultaneously, and all of them have tiny statues of babies in them. Yep. That later on, she she takes one of them, and later on it cries. What? Also, there's lipstick. <laughs> She just puts on lipstick. She found yeah, lipstick. Yeah, she finds in her a nest. lipstick and a mirror in here. So clearly, this is a metaphor for something. Yeah. Well, the whole film is a metaphor of losing your innocence, but this doesn't. I mean, I'm I'm sure this made more sense in the book. Like this was a, a like a mini metaphor. Yeah. No, like this is part of the movie where it doesn't make any sense. It's just really weird visuals. Yep. It's a dream. Whatever. Who Moving cares? on. Who cares? She brings home the stone baby and then shows her mum and her mum's like, Whoa, that's a stone baby. And then the baby cries. <laughs> Starts crying. Yeah, and then the baby like lets out a tear of this stone statue. And then that's it. That's 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 it. Noah they never talk about it again, never show it again. So I don't know. Baby doll, you like a doll? Yes you do. It's a baby doll. Yep. Found it in a nest. It's an allegory for something. I don't know what. We don't know, because the movie never talks about it ever again. It's probably a del- deleted scene, or it's in the book. One day we'll find out. If you know, send us an email. I don't care. Yeah, I don't really. I don't know. <laughs> I know what the movie's about. Leave us a YouTube comment. No. Telling us about it. Because if they leave a comment on YouTube, it helps our algorithm. Or, or the podcast, yeah. Uh, leave a review telling us all about it on iTunes. Review us on iTunes and your whole review is just what this movie means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell us the, tell us what this movie is because we don't fucking know. Anyway, yep. anyway, what's happening in the movie, Sandro? The annoying lad finds out there's a wolf in town and he's like, oh my bloody God, there's a wolf. There's a wolf, boys. Ah, we got a wolf. There's a wolf. So all the men in the village grab their guns and are like, we're going to go shoot ourselves a wolf. Hunters find this wolf. And we're all like, oh yeah, we're going to see some wolf action. But Rosaline's like, before that, I'm going to tell you a story. She tells her mum the story. Now she learned the story from the grandma, but we don't see the grandma telling her. We only see Red Riding Hood. Good old Rosalina tell it. Exactly. So the story is, a man is getting married, but the man did a woman wrong. And the woman's like, oh my mm. bloody God, the bloody man's getting married. I'm going to go to his wedding. I'm going to fuck shit up. I'm going to go fuck shit up at the wedding. Yep, because because he's, he's a young noble lad. So, yep. of course, the, the, the number one thing you got to do is go bang a peasant lady and then leave her in the dust for a rich l- rich that's, girl that's how it worked back then it was every that's that's yep. the number one thing you got to do as a young rich lad there's a little bit of a consequence because at the wedding which yep. was a very nice wedding it was nice uh, having a grand they're having a grand old time there's a there's a there's a a band of musicians playing some nice classical music yeah it's mozart from last week <laughs> but peasant girl shows up she's like oh you what you getting married was i not good enough for you you big old piece of garbage. You fucking what, mate? I'm going to turn you <laughs> all into werewolves. Yeah, because you know what? The wolves are nicer than you. So that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn you to wolves. I love I love this so much because then we just see a bunch of wolves sitting around the table wearing human clothes, and it's amazing. The transition scene is awesome, though. It is good. It is very good. Uh, although very bizarre because they keep cutting back to... The lady's face, the girl's face, mm. constant, and she's doing this really fake laughter, which really got on my nerves because it was so obviously fake. 
And it looks like they use the same laughter s- scene that she's doing over and over again. Yeah. So it goes on for a little bit. Yeah. But the werewolf transformations were very cool, as mm. they are throughout this movie. Because it's got all these noble people at the table just starting to grow, like, wolf paws and their feet and, and the yeah. arms. And you see, like, this old, like, like Aunt Edna oh, yes. who's drinking or whatever and eating. Her, her, her teeth turned into wolves, like fangs and stuff, but she doesn't even notice. No, and she's just, just looking around her like, what the heck is going on going here? On? I'm chomping down on some chicken and all these guys are acting weird. Yeah, what the heck? She, she's clearly already wasted. Yeah, that was so good. I like that a lot. She, she's clearly that art that gets wasted within the first, like, half an hour of the, the wedding. So she's already wasted. So she has no idea what's going on at yeah, this point. Yeah, she was excellent. I I think, I think I might use the picture of all the wolves sitting around the table as mm. the image for the episode, just because I love that picture. But yeah, all of all of the wolves around the table, they just, they go nuts and they destroy the tent. Yep. They completely destroy the tent. And they run off into the woods. And uh, and yeah, and then, then the woman's like, all right. I turned them all into wolves. I'm now queen of the wolves. I'm going to go live in a tree. Yep. <laughs> now, may I remind you, the 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 band has been playing this entire time <laughs> and does not stop or pause or falter when all of the guests turn into wolves. Either they're in on it or they're very professional. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought they were just the most professional band. In it. Like, they got paid, like, 20 bucks for this. That's, like, yeah. 100 Back in the day, so they're going to play this till the end. (laughs) Don't care if anybody turns to werewolves, that Mm. sort of thing. So anyway, that's how werewolves were created. (laughs) It was pretty good. It was a good scene. I liked it a lot. It doesn't, for the context of the movie, not important, but it was a good scene. Yep, it was great. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, it was wild, though. Very fun distraction. Anyway, back to the wolf hunt. Uh, They shoot a wolf. The wolf comes out and is like, sup, I'm a wolf. And they shoot the wolf like ten times. This wolf is dead. Very dead. And the dad cuts off one of the paws and takes it home as a trophy because he thinks that it's the same wolf that killed the daughter. Mm. And he finds out when he comes back to his cabin <clears throat> that the wolf paw is no longer a wolf paw. It's a human hand. Yeah, this is a, this is a, a bit of a, like, ooh... Mm. That's a bit of a bummer yeah. when you uh, when you accidentally you know, you know you take a you take a trophy because mm. you're a hunter you uh, you kill this wolf that's been killing things yeah you killed that cow at least yeah and then uh, it turns into a hand and you're like well that's that's not good no it's a bit of a bummer and so he burns it and then we cut to sleeping Rosaline who's dreaming all of this and she's crying mm. which makes you think hmm other wolves. The bad guys, or are they not? Uh, yes. The wolves are evil. Definitely. They're killing people left, right, and center. Absolutely. They literally deal with Satan all the time. That's, like, their yes. thing. Although, w- women can be werewolves, too. Yes. Yes. Which is very clear. They made that, that very, very clear. Riding Hood, Rosaline, has to bring some food to her grandmother. Mm-hmm. And so she gets her red shawl and she and she heads off through the forest and it's uh, it's the Red Riding Hood story. That's when it starts. That's when women are like, oh, this is a Red Riding Hood movie. That's right. Yeah, she's now she's now got uh, the hood on. She's going through and we're like, oh wait, yeah, Red Red Riding Hood. That's a thing. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> So she's walking through the woods and comes across this rather fancy sharp dressed man who is the huntsman mm. and he may look nice but his eyebrows bloody meat don't they uh oh uh oh you know what that means he's the spawn of satan <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the guarantee he calls himself the huntsman which is the person that mm. saves riding hood when she gets eaten by the wolf in the original, original story yeah. uh so that's cool Anyway, they have a picnic, and he's like, hey, you want to see something cool? I got a compass. Mm. I'll never get lost with my compass. Yep. It's pretty much there, There's this whole scene, uh, but they're kind of getting along. He's, he's like, I'm a handsome 
handsome man, handsomer than that piece of shit <laughs> other dude in the village, at least. Yeah. Which, to be fair, he's kind of winning in that aspect. He is. I would probably go over him. He's also, like, speaks nicer. Yeah. more of a gentleman. He's also just not saying, oh, but give us a kiss, won't you? <laughs> uh, well, he does. Well, no, no, he does eventually say that, yes. But... He goes about it a nicer way, you know? First, well, he's like, let's have a picnic first, you know? Let's have some... Look, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a man with value. He's whining and dining. Whiner and diner first. Then, <laughs> then you know. God. Whereas the other young lad, he's just like, give me a yeah, kiss. Yeah, exactly. Come on. Yeah. I've, I've been nice to you for five seconds. I deserve a kiss. What an incel. An incel. What was he? <laughs> yeah. He's an incel. Yeah, the young village kid is an incel. <laughs> And this guy's a simp. Yeah, yeah. That one's an it. And I prefer a simp over an incel. You know what? For sure. Sure. <laughs> Why not? But all, si- all simps are werewolves. All simps anyway, are werewolves. And have unibrows. <laughs> all simps have <laughs> and unibrows <laughs> and are werewolves and work for Satan. Yes, correct. You're <laughs> like, where's the simp getting all the money he's given me? It's from Satan. He sold his soul. It's from <laughs> Satan. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Twitch streamers are being funded by Satan. <laughs> This is a fact. <laughs> look, look. T- Twitch streamers are the works of the devil. Good on them, though. Good on Satan, though. Pumping, pumping. Good on Satan. Yeah, yeah. Supporting our local yeah, Twitch streamers. Supporting streamer. the arts. Yeah, it's a good time. He is a gentleman, after all. That's a he fact. He is indeed. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, back to the movie. Yeah. Uh, they make a bet that if uh, Rosaline gets to the granny's house first, she gets to keep the compass. But. If the hunter gets to Granny's house first, they go, blood a smooch. That's the bet. So, yeah, then it kind of plays out how how the rest of the fairy mm. tale plays out, because the hunter arrives there oh first. Oh, my God, though. When when he gets there, this is... This is... It's, it's good. What a scene. It's great. So, first it's of great. all, he knocks on the door, and Granny's like, who is it? And he says, it's me, your granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. It's great. I loved it. I loved it. Mm. He walks in. They have a bit of a confrontation, which was pretty fun. Because there's a ferret. He punches the ferret. But then, like, we see that he's he's starting to turn a bit more wolfy. He's got the, the wolf eyes, which are very, very clear in this movie, where the wolves get, like, uh, yellow irises mm. before they turn into a werewolf, uh, wolves yeah. sort of things. Um, but then she's like, holy crap, he has a unibrow. You're the work of the devil. Get away from me, you spawn of Satan. She does say that. She does say that. In that voice. And he's mm. got blood on his cheek, I think. And so he's like, I'm just going to lick mm. that off. And then his giant tongue comes out of his mouth. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so long. It's horrifying. We see it several times coming up in these scenes. It's, yeah. It's not, and, like, it's not, like, a natural long tongue, like, the band Kiss. It's yeah, a very fake long tongue, which I think makes it creepier. It's like a giraffe tongue. Yeah, it's like a giraffe tongue. It's real, it's real gross. It's it's long and wiggly and licking. And anyway, uh, she, she, I believe she gets a Bible out. And tries to hit him with the Bible, and he's like, ha, Bibles. Silly old lady. So he slaps her head off. <laughs> he just, just yeets. Yeets her head off. One punch. <laughs> One punch, man. Just budget. And her head just shatters like pottery. It does. <laughs> like what? It, 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 it was so jarring. But I just, I just started laughing. I was... It was amazing. I was losing it. It, it literally... So... He knocks her head off and her head goes flying, but her head smashes against the wall like it's made of pottery. Yep. Because it is. It is. That's the effect. And I guess it's a dream. That's all I can say. <laughs> yep. So uh, so then we cut to Rosaline. She's outside and she's approaching the cabin. Looks up at the moon. The moon's a wolf eye. That's cool. Yep. As you do. Nothing wrong there. Don't worry about it. Anyway, she knocks on the door, enters the cabin. The wolf... It starts pretending to be the granny, but gives it up pretty quickly. <laughs> we just have the whole, like, enter it, my dear. Yeah. And then she goes in and she's like, oh, you beat me here. And he's like, yep, yep, I did. Now give me a smooch. Yeah. But then she, of course, is like, hey, uh, but where the hell is my gran, Where's though? my gran? And he's like, 
she's outside. And so Rosaline's like, oh, I'll go go look out the window. No, she's not. You're a wolf. (laughs) You're a liar (laughs) and a werewolf. (laughs) And you ate my grandma. And you ate my grandma. I can see the hair in the fireplace because you guys don't like eating the hair. Mm. Also, you just stepped on my grandma's glasses. Yep. All that happens. I think she says, my, what big eyes you have. She says a couple of lines like that. Yeah, she does the, like, my, what big eyes you have. And it's, like, all the better to admire you with, my dear. Mm. Or something like that. My, what big arms you have. All the better to hug you, my dear. Yeah, which was a weird one. That was a bit creepy. Yeah. But also, they've already kissed at that point, so whatever. Yeah, yeah. So they they, they have a bit of a smoochy doodle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Um, And then she's like, hang on a second. You did kill my granny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she kisses the granny murderer, but then uh, grabs the gun. That yeah. Because she's like, hang on a second. No, that is a red flag. Mm. <laughs> hang on. Yeah, no, actually, you killing my granny, that is a red flag. I am going to get the rifle. Mm. So she grabs the rifle and uh, and she shoots him. And he, uh, mm. and he, he starts writhing. He starts shaking a lot. Mm. And he kind of gets down on all fours, and it kind of it kind of oh, looks God. like something's trying to come out of him. Like there's something inside of him. Like some some sort of weird. Oh my God, his face! A wolf wolf nose just went out his mouth. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! Oh, and out his back. A wolf wolf bones just shooting out his back. We see fur. Fur's ever he's he's splitting like he's he's evolving. Yep. He's a Pokemon. Do 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 do. Hunter Man evolved into just a wolf. A wolf jumps out of his skin. Yep. <laughs> and it looks amazing. I think it's it's phenomenal. It's such a good effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the wolf nose shooting out of his mouth, the mm. like the skin splitting on the back to to have the like wolf uh fur popping out. It's like, whoa, she's about to get wrecked. Except, except like you think that, but then the wolf comes out and the wolf starts crying. Yep. It's a sad wolf. It's just kind of a dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a sad dog now. Yeah. The man's just turned into a sad, sad dog. And so Rosaline's like, oh, it's okay, wolf. I know you didn't meet. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story, wolf. <laughs> yeah, because she's literally like, oh, man, the dog's sad. I forgive you, dog, for eating my grandma. <laughs> Let me tell you a story to make you feel better. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story about a wounded wolf to make you, a wounded wolf, feel better. Mm. Um, so she tells the story of this wolf that was in a village and got shot. So the wolf ran f- for help and went to the church and and the priest or pastor helped the wolf, who was actually mm. a human child, meaning that there is good mm. in the world. Uh, so she tells that story. Then we cut to, uh, her parents and pretty much everyone in the village is out looking for her. They've got guns, they've got rifles Mm. and they run into granny's cabin and they Mm. see a wolf wearing a necklace, a necklace that Rosaline wears. Mm. And they're like, oh no, she just went and turned herself into a werewolf. Yeah. Yeah. So, she, 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 as as the werewolf heard, but it has a necklace. So the mum recognizes. Oh my god, that's 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 my daughter. And then the dad is like, "I'ma shoot my daughter." <laughs> yeah. And the mum's like, "No!" So she stops him shooting their daughter. We wake up from the dream, and there's wolves, and they eat her. The end. <laughs> that's not entire. Well, that that, that 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 that's basically what happens. But we see though, yeah. the wolves aren't any wolves. They are the wolves from the village, because all of the wolves from the village, they all kind of team up and they run around the village, go into a house, which turns out to be the house that the sleeping Rosaline is mm. in, burst through like a, a painting, which I guess is the portal. And then, yeah, they go and eat her. <laughs> they run into a room and they eat her. Mm. And then it ends. It ends with a poem, actually. Mm. Um, yes, during during the... Just at the start of the credits or whatever. Yeah, a poem about um, werewolves. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. Um, I think the final shot is her toys. Like, all her toys are falling. Mm. So, I took it to mean that 
the wolves coming into her room and killing her mm-hmm. are the wolves coming in and killing like her perception of the world like a very black and white childlike perception of the world because that's kind of what this story is about the story is mm. about kids think there's good and evil and that's it but then rosaline through this journey learns that there's shades mm. and i guess the sleeping rosaline learns that as well and hence why <laughs> when she dies quotation marks dies that's her childness dying her childlike perception dying mm. but also that's very much me port- like uh-huh. projecting onto this movie because it doesn't ex- it it doesn't yeah confirm or deny any of that that was just what i got from it yeah i think uh my uh my uh interpretation was that some wolves at the end come and murder her that was that was my end i thought there was just an ending i well that's the thing is like all throughout watching this that was like there's something else Mm. this entire movie is an allegory and so i was trying to figure it out while watching it and that's what i thought the allegory was and then I'm trying to make it tie into the ending, even though it doesn't really work, though. Mm. That's the other thing is, like, every sort of thing that I can figure out what this movie's about, I can't tie it into the ending properly. Mm. So maybe the ending is just an 80s horror film ending where they're, they're like, you thought everyone was safe, but ha ha ha, everyone's dead. Because that's how every horror film from the 80s ends. So mm. I, I, I don't know. I don't think it's done as well as it could have been done. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know. I thought it was. I thought it was interesting. I quite liked it. I I enjoyed this film, and I mean, for through for two point three mil, I think they did very well with what what they did. I I sure it could have been done better, but I don't think it could have been done much better. I think it could have just been clearer. I don't know. The thing is, I don't know the context from the the book itself because I haven't read the book, but I have a feeling. They they managed to do quite well with the fact that this book was metaphorically heavy. Mm. So you know, I I'm quite pleased with this film. I'll I'll give them the benefit of the doubt in this, where I think they did quite well because there was a lot of metaphors and stuff going on. I feel. Oh yeah, so. there, there was a lot. But I think this was a very f- fun film to watch. I think yeah, they packed in so much that it was kind of, they kind of they kind of screwed themselves a little bit because they packed in so many metaphors mm. that they couldn't really uh, expand on many of them. It was just a lot of concepts were in there and never really expanded upon, which is fine. There are so mm. many movies that are great that do that. I just feel like um, for me personally, I think this movie tried to bite off more than it could chew, and it really didn't come together in the end. And, mm. like, the seeds are there, but you've got to kind of go searching for it more than more than I think you should for a movie like this. I don't know. Mm. I, I, I was fine with it being a bit confusing. That's fine. Oh, yeah, same. I, I, I didn't think it needed to explain, and that's obviously a thing, I, I think, which too many movies are just, like, explaining things over and over, making sure everyone knows exactly what's going on. Which makes it rather mm. boring, I feel, when they when they patronize. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that they needed to explain it. I'm saying that they needed to uh, maybe have more visual cl- cues to kind of clue you in on exactly what everything meant. So yeah, what are you gonna rate this one? I uh, I definitely rated it. I definitely rate this a goodie for sure. Okay, absolutely for sure. Look, I enjoyed it. So I think, like, it's an oldie from me, but it's an oldie in the sense of, like, Footloose was an oldie, in that I'm not going to recommend it to people, but I watched it and I didn't hate it, so, you know. Mm. Like, it's an oldie, but it's, like, a positive oldie, because not all oldies are bad movies, they're just old movies that probably aren't worth going back to, because they've been done better since then. I, I disagree. I definitely recommend this to people. I I might actively go back and watch this again, just to, like trip out you know (laughs) because this is such a wacky wild film and i thoroughly enjoyed it i def i I definitely want to read the original story i think that would Mm. be very good i will go back and do that definitely also i watched um there's a netflix movie called i'm thinking of ending things that just came out that is very much like nothing makes sense you've got to figure Mm. it out for yourself and that movie did it so well 
in that it like I had to research a musical to find out what the ending <laughs> meant. Mm. And it all like it all came together in the end. It didn't make sense while you were watching it, mm. but it all came together in the end after uh, you spend time thinking about it and doing research about it. Whereas with this, I don't think if I do any research or if I think about it for longer that it will come together, which is why I'm giving it an oldie, because it's just a little bit messy. Mm. But anyway. I don't know. I just enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun film. This is a good film. I enjoyed it. Now it's time to completely ruin the legacy of this movie and pitch a sequel. <laughs> Wow. All right. Do you know what my sequel is? Uh, World War Three. Well, I was going to do that. Mm. But I really feel like we should use some... Could use some context. Oh, right? yeah, okay. I think that's what we were really missing. So, uh, this is about um, Grandma the Werewolf Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who is... Uh, it's, it's So, you know the um, Abraham Lincoln... The Werewolf Hunter. Oh. It's like that, but it's Grandma from Red Riding Hood. Uh, but she's she's young and sexy. Oh. So so she's going around murdering werewolves in, like, a fairy tale setting. Ooh. So it's got, like, the three piggies who are like, Hey, there's this werewolf that's been murdering our family. Please help. Yep. And they bait they bait the werewolf with their flimsy houses. That's cool. And then she has to murder uh, the werewolf. But in the end, she also murders the pigs because they're werepigs. Ooh. Um, it was actually a double twist where she murders the werewolf and then it's like, now that he's got done, I've got all three of you here trapped in this house. Mm. And then... They're like, what? And she's like, yeah, I don't like anywhere creatures. And they're like, what? <laughs> but only yep. the werewolf ones are bad. And it's like, all werewolves are the spawns of Satan. All were. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. All were creatures. And yeah, she murders more, more <laughs> classic uh, fairy tale creatures. She she murders uh, all the all the dwarves, all of red, all of Snow White's dwarves. No, 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 no. What happens is she teams up with them. Ooh. To murder the, the, the queen. A were queen. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. We'll go with that. She's just a um, normal but... person, but then on a full moon, she becomes a queen. <laughs> sure. Sure. But a like... crown grows out of her head, and she's like, I'm um, transforming you're... into a were queen. <laughs> you're making this far worse than it needed to be. Um, no, no, no. But it's the younger dwarves. They're not so grumpy uh, and stuff. They all have like action hero things like oh, no. kick ass and <laughs> bone breaker. And that's their like personalities. Mm -hmm. And they, they're hardworking, obviously. Mm. And they like protect it. They're all simps. Oh. They're all like protecting a female. So they team up with her. They're like, we need help murdering this witch. And she's like, witch hunting, you say, chick, chick. I'm down. And then they murder murder that. And that's that's more shenanigans. Like, uh, she murders Humpty Dumpty. Oh, no. Uh, because he deserves it. He's, si he's sitting on private property. Yeah. You can't do that. Awful person. Get out of there. I'm trying to think of more fairy tale villains. Um, There's a few. There's a few. Um, just a lot of witches. There's a lot of witches you murder. Because there's several witches in different stories. She just murders witches. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what's your film? Uh, my film is about uh, this rather poor and and down on on their luck uh, like construction company from back in the day. Well, like in the village, there's this this father and his two sons, mm. and they go around building houses for people, uh, but they haven't had any business recently because you you know all the houses in the village are built. No one's moving out to this village, so they've got no work until mm. a contract comes through to build a cabin out in the woods for a granny. And they're like, ooh, some work. This is marvellous. We're going to go out in the woods. We're going to go build this cabin. Mm. The problem is the woods are dangerous. Oh, yes. Can't stray from the path. Don't stray from the path. They're trying to build this house. They're going back and forth from, like, their workshop to the house and, like, w where they're building it. But along the way, all these weird things happen. They've got to go off the path because they need some wood. They've got to chop down a tree, but they're, like, can't stray from the path. So things start to get dangerous. Some of the people start mm. dying. They, have, they hire a team. Sometimes some of the people from that team, they don't return mm. from their journeys off the path. 
it's about building the house in a dangerous forest. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just how's that house built? It's just, just a real scary Look, house building. I, I just want to know how that ferret got there. So you know what? That would be good. The ferret was there from the beginning. The, the ferret uh, was in a tree, and they built the house around the tree. Ooh, it's like a, it is a, a, a fairy ferret. Yes, a fairy ferret. Exactly. An, a magical ferret that inhabits this 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 plateau in the woods, and it's called Creepy Cabin Builders. <laughs> this, this this title title's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> the movie is filmed like a reality show, even though it <laughs> sets t- takes place in the Victorian age, so it doesn't make any sense. Nice, but the people are like, yeah. "All right, we're building the house." We're gonna go down the. Place. It's like Blair Witch Project, but but look out for that uh, magical ferret. He'll bite your ankles He'll off. Bite your ankles off. Anyway, it mm. sucks and everyone hates. It. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a ten percent on the the old tomato meter. Anyway, it's time then, Sandra, mm. for the worst segment. No, oh. it's the it's your good old ra 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 Raven reviews. Oh, thanks, Granny. There were some good reviews, so let's quickly go through them because there's quite a few. Mm. Oh, of course, I have to explain the segment, otherwise no one will get it because no one's seen the segment before. It's uh, it's where I get reviews from uh, Rotten Tomatoes, the best place to get reviews, but not from the critics, from the audience because they're the, clearly the better ones. They mm. give you the real facts. And Sandra has to guess the score. Yes. I'll, I'll tell him the review. He guesses the score. That's how it works. Leia Ooh. From, from Star Wars Whoa. says... Uh, it's not from Star Wars. No. I uh, says, this is not your typical Little Red Riding Hood. It's not. Uh, there is an explanation. Oh, this is not your typical Red Riding Hood. This is not your hood. typical Little Red Riding Hood. Mm, this is a four out of five review. I think you mean five out of five, oh, Sandra. Damn. Try again. There's an explanation mark. I tried to tell you. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Okay, Dennis says, you might get this one. Uh, the company of crappy wolves. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. That's probably like a one, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's a 0. 0.5. Oh, okay, it's, yeah. It's it's crappy of. wolves. Didn't like that one. All right. Company of crappy wolves. <laughs> yeah. No, it's company of crappy wolves. Because uh, it's all caps. The crappy. Uh, of, co- of, co- of course it is. Well, if you told me it was all caps, yeah, 100% 0.5. But yeah, anyway, yeah, anyway, yeah. anyway, anyway. Simon says, I've waited years to see it again. This time on DVD. Hmm. I wasn't disappointed. Oh, by the quality of the DVD or the quality of the movie? Yeah, he went into further detail on his blog, on his Facebook page. But unfortunately, we didn't manage to get that up. So we've only got, yeah. I've waited years to see it again. This time on DVD. I wasn't disappointed. Simon is the sort of person who would have a blog in the year 2020. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, this is a f- 5 out of 5, I think. It's a 3 out of 5. Try again, Sancho. Not super positive. Oh, well. Sal says, The stupidest movie ever. I have fallen asleep in several movies, but this is the only movie I have ever walked out of. I mean, it's 0. 0.5. <laughs> yeah, it's 0. 0.5. <laughs> Not exactly the most positive review, I have to say. Oh, dear me. Uh, could have been a little bit more positive. Unfortunate. Oh, well. <laughs> hmm. Don't worry. We have uh, Conjo, who has uh, the hot takes, which is cult material for small kids. Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. What? Cult um, material for small kids. You can't argue with it. No. I also can't argue for it. Yep. This is I don't context. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> let's let's break this down. <laughs> let's break this down. <laughs> cult material for small kids. Clearly, he's meaning either that the movie is a cult classic. That's what I was thinking. But then, like kids watch this cult classic. <laughs> well, yeah. it came out in 1984. So when you were kids, you watched it. But then, as an adult, it's now a cult classic for you because. As a kid, you saw it. Or it's referring to the fact that the grandma's starting a cult for kids. That's true. That's true. Either way, I think it's a three down the middle. It's a four out of five. No, it's okay. All right, then. All right, fine. All righty, then. All right. We have 
Matthew, who's a super reviewer. Oh, great. So I don't normally have super reviewers in it, but I just thought this was a good review. It says, Mm. The story of a girl's coming of sexual age, metaphorically put through the power of dreams. That is what this movie is, yes. That is... Yep, it's a good review. Yes, kind of. Kind of. That's kind of, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, kind of. Kind of. (laughs) Kind of, yeah. Because the dream's also not... We won't get into it again. I'm going to stick with three. Ah, it's 3.5. Oh, you right. were close. Close. All right. Here we go. Here's. I put this one in because the username was great. Uh, ye oldy inter neti site. <laughs> uh, site spelt with a Y. Great. <laughs> Good work. Says weird, full stop, freaking, full stop, Movie, full stop, all caps. Mm, I would argue that this is not a movie, it's a film. Mm, it's a that, film. Uh, I would argue that those are the same thing. No. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Weird uh, freaking movie. This review is a 3.5. It's a one out of five. Oh, it's a negative one. <laughs> yeah, it's a negative one. Well, weird doesn't always mean bad. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got two more left. So Tommy says, definitely on my list of worst movies ever made. Uh, Asterix throws up and nods off Asterix. <laughs> That's funny. It's 0.5. <laughs> yeah, it's 0.5. It's 0.5. And finally, Brett, what I think uh, something we can all agree with that sums up this movie perfectly. He says, such a sexy wolf-tastic flick. <laughs> Uh, it's a furry out of five. <laughs> it um, is, in fact, a furry out of five. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what, what do you think? Yeah, five out of five. Fine on. It's a five out of five. Yeah, it's yeah. a five out of five. Well done. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, there we go. Well done. <laughs> yeah, some high quality reviews that once was, again. That was, yeah, that was about what I expected. Uh, <laughs> All right. We're coming to the end of the show. That's it. I think uh, I think uh, if you like this show, you should leave a comment. Tell us tell us your interpretation of this movie because boy, we could use some help. Yep. It it was a wild ride. Let us know. Also, if you want to uh, help us out, you can tell a friend or review the show on iTunes. That both helps us out a lot. You get the show out in front of new listeners, puts it in mm. some new ear holes, mm. which is good. There's links to everything in the description, socials, YouTube, all that. Links in the description. Uh, pick a next week's episode. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Sandro, you got several options. All right. You have one. Annie's Coming Out. Oh. Also known as A Test of Love. Ooh. It's a multiple award-winning... Australian movie. <gasps> Australian. So it's got to have lots of rewards. It's Australian movie. Yeah, like two. Uh, it's about the early life of a real-life uh, disability activist, mm. uh, Rosemary uh, Crossley. All right. And it's set in Melbourne during the 70s. That's pretty cool. Then we have County, a rural family struggling with money as they try and hold on to their farm. Oh. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Sounds sad. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Whenever I think of people on a farm running out of money, I just get really sad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most, most, I feel like farm movies don't usually end well. <laughs> they don't. They always have some, any movie that has a farm in it has a tragedy in it. Yeah, exactly. At some point. Just, just at some point. Doesn't yeah. mean the movie's depressing. It no. just has a tragedy. <laughs> um, then we have irreconcilable differences. Uh, a young Drew Barrymore oh. tries to sue her parents for a divorce because they didn't spend enough time with her. That sounds great. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that sounds pretty good. I love that. That's a good concept. <laughs> and then we have the River Rat. Tommy Lee Jones returns Ooh. from prison and tries to connect with his daughter. That sounds sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what that has to do with a river or rats, but there maybe you go. maybe the river rat was a nickname that he used to call his daughter. But then they grew apart, and now he's like river rat, river rat, and she's like, I'm no longer the river rat. I am uh-huh. the mountain mouse. Or maybe he's just like, he worked on the docks as a sort of shifty person and then got arrested. Mm, anyway. That's also true. Uh, the wildlife. 
Ooh. A high school wrestler parties with his buddies at a swinging singles apartment complex. Not doing that one. Yeah, no, that sounds... We've done too many 80s party movies about dude bros. Yeah, that sounds like it has a lot of dude bros, and I didn't like them to begin with. Uh, Well, the two sad ones I'm not going to pick, because I don't want to do a sad movie. That's fair. There was like three sad ones, to be fair. It's just an award-winning one, so you know that you're going to feel emotions. Oh, yeah. If a movie won awards, it's sad. You're going <laughs> to feel something, and sometimes I don't want to feel anything. No. Except maybe confusion. This, and, and, the movie... And uh, laughter. Company of Wolves made me feel many things. Mainly <laughs> yeah. confusion and... Uh, suspense. Sadness was never a feeling I felt during that movie. <laughs> no. Uh, I think I might go for the Drew Barrymore film because I like the idea of a kid trying to sue parents for divorce. <laughs> yes. That sounds pretty fun. Yeah. And we haven't really done a movie about a family in a while. We've done a lot of, like, yeah. sci-fis and fantasies Do and horrors. Do a nice, wholesome family film about a daughter suing her parents for their divorce. <laughs> let's do that. Yeah, I don't want to pick sad films. Anyway, let's do this film about divorce. <laughs> But it's from a child's perspective, so it's happy. Yeah. No, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well done with that one. Anyway, that sounds like a fun film. I want to do that one as well. We'll do that so one next week. Uh, this has actually been a longer episode than a lot of our most recent ones. But anyway. Yeah, I had a lot of I had a lot of things to complain about this movie. So um, <laughs> uh, to, to discuss, I feel. Not yes. complain, discuss. But yeah. Let's wrap it up with and- the best quote from... The company of the wolves. What's 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 your quote? Pest, 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 pest. Well, what a what a what a what a sister. I'm glad she died. Worst. Did she? In the dream, at least, and that's good enough. Yeah. Wish she had died in real life. Oh, that's a bit mean. Good on it. Well, don't you know, Sandro? Yeah. That if a young man has eyebrows that meet, run away. For they are consorting with the devil. Ah. If if they are born on Christmas Day, leg first, with with hair that meets at the eyebrows, they will consort with the devil. Wow, Granny, what large stories you have! Yeah, what long tales you have! What tall tales you have, what Granny? You have. Yeah, all the better to mislead you with, my dear. (laughs) 